bless your name. We give you thanks and praise because there is none like you. There is none like you, Jesus. That each one of us is unique. Each one of us has a certain DNA. Each one of us was created for a purpose. Lord, we want to just say, bless your holy name. That you have given us another day, we want to say, bless your holy name. And so, friend, this is the day the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Yes, Lord, we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Because, yes, all other gods will not hear our cry. All other gods will not listen to our prayer. All other gods other than you are a vanity. And so, Lord, we pray that even as we read your word and you minister to your people, you will speak and give a certain person hope that with you all things are possible. And thank you, Lord. Silence every other voice that is coming from within and without. These storms that buffet us so that as we study your word, you will be able to minister to a certain soul for salvation of mankind belongs unto you, our God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated and thank you, choir. Thank you so, so much for coming. And those of you who are joining us through various platforms, thank you for joining us. The name is Reverend Jasper Tumihimbise, by the grace of God, a member of All Saints Cathedral previously, but I have a church which I minister in, and I also work at the province. My topic, okay, our topic today, because surely it can't be mine, is the spirit and divine immunity. The spirit and divine immunity, and we shall take the reading from Acts chapter 28, from verse 1 to verse 5. Actually, we shall move on to above verse 6. And then later, I will connect 7 to 10 with the text which we have read. The Bible says, Acts chapter 28, please turn with me, Acts chapter 28. The Bible says, after we had escaped, we then learned that the island was called Malta. And the natives showed us unusual kindness, for they kindled a fire and welcomed us all because it had begun it rain and was cold. Paul had gathered a band of sticks and put them on the fire. When a viper came out because of the heat and fastened on, on his hand, when the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, no doubt this man is a murderer. Though he had escaped from the sea, justice has not allowed him to live. He, however, shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. They waited, expecting him to swell up or suddenly fall down dead. But when they had waited a long time and saw no misfortune come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a God, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A very interesting narrative by, again, Dr. Rook. We, looked, we have been looking through the power of the Holy Spirit and, you know, the Pentecost power. And from chapter 2, when the Spirit came onwards, we have Dr. Rook, the one who wrote the Acts of the Apostles, narrating the stories around Paul and other apostles. But specifically, Paul, his arrest, his trips. And when you read in Acts, they sailed. You know that it is Paul and his companions without Dr. Rook. But when you read where he says, we sailed, or we moved to, it means Dr. Rook was with who? Was with Paul. So, and I'm not going again to go into who wrote because again, you know theologians, they go behind and say maybe 
a companion of Luke or what. But clearly, when you read Luke chapter 1, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, he was narrating what Jesus did from the day he was born up to when he died. And his, that narration was to a Theophilus, most excellent Theophilus. When you read chapter one of Acts, you'll begin by saying that in my former book, O oh, most excellent Theophilus, I wrote about what Jesus did. So now he now begins the post resurrection story regarding the apostles. But specifically, he focuses on Paul. Even to the extent that when Paul now disagrees with Barnabas regarding John Mark, then Barnabas is no longer recorded and we continue with Paul. So in chapter 28, we see what we would call divine immunity. Divine immunity, number one, in the way he escaped. I mean, we shall look through chapter 27 to give this a background. But also divine immunity in the way he was welcomed those days and some of the places today, if you have an accident, I can assure you, they kill you and take what you have. Even in Uganda, I mean, an accident, they are busy stealing phones. So even welcome and making a fire for you is divine what? Immunity. And then later, a viper of all snakes is on his hand. Divine immunity. He shakes it off and continues living. And so those are the three immunities I will be able to expose to us and also encourage us to know that this divine immunity is still available for you and for me. Some of it we shall never know. I mean, when we go to heaven, that's when he will tell you, by the way, the other accident, my hand was there. By the way, last night, as you dreamt of death and what, my hand was what? There. So divine immunity is not obvious to many people. But when you are sensitive to the Holy Spirit, he'll actually tell you that is me who drew you out of that situation. And so what is this immunity? This divine immunity is a protection for believers, a seal of the Spirit that God will protect you by the way, irrespective of what you think and believe. Even coming here, it is what? Divine protection. Why? Because if you see the evidence of people around who have even gone, who have had the accidents, and I'm not saying that having an accident means that God is not actually protecting, no. I will even come to it later that sometimes death is a means of God is what? Protection. That he will take you away in order to protect you from certain what? Certain things. But it's a protection where believers of authority are assured of God's divine hand being upon them, even when they do not know it. It's now, it is a covenant right as a believer that we are protected by God. It is like a covenant right that I will protect you, I will give you the peace that surpasses all understanding. Now, the Bible talks about divine protection in different ways. But Psalm 73, verse 5, Psalm 73, verse 5, it is as if this is now was David, you know, thinking that God is overprotecting the what? <laughs> the wicked. That trouble does not come to near them, nor are they plagued like what? Like mankind. But when you read verse 16, he says, I believed that until when they entered the sanctuary of God. That when you enter the sanctuary of God, that's when you feel that divine protection is real and it is not necessarily in the things that we see. Also, Acts chapter 8, verse 22 to 23, is very interesting because while Egypt was being plagued by all plagues recorded in the Bible, who was protected? 
Gosed. It is darkness in Egypt. Gosed, there is what? There is light. Okay, if I was an Egyptian now, I would join that light. And by the way, if you are not saved even as I talk, please join that divine protection because it is clear, it is real. Now, if you read Acts chapter 12, verse 13, that divine protection even had now a mark where they went marking on Jews what? Jews doorposts. And when the angel of death came, they, he bypassed. And that's what you call it, Passover. He overpassed all those who were identified by the blood of the Lamb. And so, divine protection becomes more real for you and me when we are hidden under the blood of the what? Under the blood of the Lamb. If you go to Genesis, God protects Noah by putting him, the wife, and his children, three, and the daughter-in-laws into the ark. And the Bible says it is God who shut the what? Who shut the door. Interesting. God shutting the what? The door. So that water is not able to hit Noah. Abraham is even more interesting. He lies that Sarah is a what? Is my sister. But divine protection goes and tells the people who took Sarah to be a wife that you are dead men. Why? Because you have touched the prophet's wife. And I normally assume really when they took Sarah, he had overnights. You get it? I don't think he stopped praying. If you take my wife, or even mine of my children, or a relative, will I go and sleep? No, I will pray. And so you can actually enforce divine what? Protection. And in God's sovereignty, he has allowed man and woman actually to order that. That when we pray, he's able to say, I will protect your child. And it is through what? Remote control. I mean, you don't have to be there because he's omnipotent. He's everywhere. Then when you come to people like Lot, Lot is also in the Bible, where he goes to Sodom and Gomorrah, a place where things are bad. But let me tell you, divine protection through the intervention of Abraham is that I can't destroy Sodom and Gomorrah when Noah, I mean Lot, and his children are still there. And when I was reading it in Genesis chapter 18 and 19, actually read it, you'll find that after, you know, the prayer from Abraham, angels had a problem with the Lord failing to move quickly. They had instructed, move quickly. And he said, let me go to Zohar, that small town. They said, okay, for the sake of you, go. We shall not destroy what? Zohar. And I want to say this. We are going to pray through this. That for the sake of you, who is watching, even who is in this church, God will not destroy your relatives and friends. That's it. Divine immunity to you, but also to people around you. And so there are certain things God doesn't do simply because of you. Now, New Testament... Peter is in a prison. They had to cut his head off on a Sunday morning. They had cut James. That's Acts chapter 12. He's in the prison asleep. The church was what? Praying. Divine immunity entered. Chains were broken. The door opened by itself. Divine immunity. In fact, he thought he was what? Dreaming. May God cause some of those dreams which the enemy has held for long to collapse in his name. And when he gets out and he goes to Roda's, <laughs> Roda's place where they were praying from, like, you know, God visiting all saints' cathedral, have been praying, God finish this cathedral. He visits us, but we don't even know. Because when he knocked, a Roda, I like Roda's, she was so excited that she couldn't open. You get it? So excited. Oh, that there is Peter, whom we have been praying for on the door, but she couldn't open it. She told the people then, those who were praying, they said, okay, it is Peter's who? Peter's angel. 
So there are certain things you pray for, God intervenes. Reality is that he has protected you, but when they come, you begin saying, eh, Bambi, this is a chance, this is an accident, this can't happen. I was with my friend and then we, we prayed and when we met somebody, she said, she said eh, I can't believe this could happen. Okay, but we were praying, so why are you not believing what you were actually praying for? May God again give you that peace of mind to know that when you have prayed, my daughter, my son, all will be well. Let's go now to this text. We now enter, and by the way, you can note Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 15, the Lord will remove from you all sickness, no any harm or disease will come to you. Those are promises of divine what? protection. It has nothing to do with sometimes even the faithfulness of what? Of Israel. And let me tell you, still God is in the business of protecting his people. So, we go now to the real text. And I'm going to talk about what protect, divine protection does. Number one, divine protection helps you to escape. Divine protection helps you to escape. But also escape with the people around you. Chapter 27, verse 37. We were in all 276 persons in the ship. Verse 42. Verse 42. The soldiers' plan was to kill the prisoners. Now, for Romans, if you had a prisoner, there was no reason for escape. If a prisoner escaped, they would kill you. So if there is a storm, you ignore the storm, kill the prisoners. That was it. Now listen to what the Bible says. Now we have about 276 persons. The soldiers planned to kill prisoners lest any swim away and escape. But the centurion wishing to save who? Paul. And it is actually Paul who said, I had told you not to sail, but now you sit and begin eating because none of you will die. Can you imagine? That Paul was able to tell <laughs> people who have bound him in prison that, by the way, even prisoners, none of you would die. Total 276. So there is a way in which God allows you as a person for people to depend on your immunity. But for, particularly for these prisoners. But the centurion wishing to save Paul kept them from carrying out their purpose. He ordered those who could swim to throw themselves overboard and the rest of the planks or pieces of sheep. And so it was all that it was all that escaped. So everybody escaped because of what? Paul, not because of swimming. Because they even wanted to kill them. And so the first thing you needed to know is that divine immunity for especially children of God is available for those children, and it is available to help you escape. And that's why I encourage you, even this afternoon, to thank God for some escapes, my friend. And for some of us who didn't know the grace of God, let me, t I born in a village, I was born in bleach, you know bleach, bringing legs, and the only means of transport was a what? A stretcher. You get it? I call it a helicopter gunship. And here I am, 50 something years after, and I don't die. Marelija, what? Cover is cold. I remember you suffer from cough, they go to. Oh, divine what? Immunity. I had been already immunized for a purpose in my what? In my life. Grenade attack, accidents. I have ever, <laughs> I have ever gone into a river to swim. You get it? When I never knew how to swim. And it was taking me, one of my uncles just jumped in 
we would have drowned together. Okay. I want to tell you, friend, thank God for divine immunity. Known or unknown. Unknown. I mean, I normally give you this example, those of us with the children. You'll get up at night to go and check whether that arm is outside the what? The net. The person in the net <laughs> will never know that daddy or mommy or a relative did what? Got up. But that relative became a means of what? Escape. Ask God to keep putting that net around you, my friend. Let him put it around you. And when he says in Psalm 91 that there is a place, let me tell you that hiding place is available for each one of us that he will be able to protect us. That's number one. Secondly, sowing, being shown unusual kindness. After we had escaped, that's verse 28, then learned that the island was called Maruta, and the natives showed unusual kindness. Ooh. So when you go sometimes and somebody gives you a lift, let me tell you, <laughs> Don't begin saying because I'm dressed smartly. Thank God for divine what? Immunity. And it is available that wherever we go, people are showing us kindness. Instead of hostility, there is a level of favor. If you read the Bible, that's me. Acts chapter 2 from verse 42. Around up to verse 47, there is what they call divine favor. That where you go, there is what? Some light, there is some favor. And so the second aspect of divine immunity, how we see it, is that God favors people. They lit the fire, we welcomed them, the environment was nice. But there is when you are going to a place, all your thoughts are my God. And when you reach, Hey, by the way, you are welcome. So if you have a landlord who welcomes you, that's a divine immunity, my friend. Especially, even if you have paid, me, I had a landlord who said, whether I pay or not, I need to go away. And the reason was because my cousin was sick. She was married in Kampala. When she came back, <laughs> uh, she found on the door, I have shifted, please don't follow me. And so she looked for a, a closest relative. She found me in a house of plastics. House of plastics, I had a plastic plate, plastic glass, plastic basin, plastic chair. I mean, everything was what? Plastic. I was staying in Kasubi. But then she had a challenge. She said that, okay, I am going to stay here until when I get transport to go what? Home. So I had to mention to the landlord that, you know, we have a person around. Then he said, I had her coughing. I said, yes, she's uh, HIV positive and she's advanced. So he said, So you haven't paid me one month, but you and her, if you don't get where to put her, please do what? Leave. But there is a God who does what? Who protects. I prayed, my friend. The next day, one of my cousins, a professor at Makerere, came and told me that, eh, last night I was thinking about you. I said, oh, God, thank you. And then he said, eh, you mean, she's called it Tsingwide, she was called it Tsingwide. You mean Tsingwide is here? I said, yeah. What is she doing? The husband put a notice. And those days there was no way of even tracking the phone so that you know where somebody is staying. But I'm talking about unusual kindness from God, where people surround you with the kindness which doesn't really make even sense. But quite a long story short, while the landlord was showing me unusual hardiness, God moved hearts of others to, pay, to come and give me what? Money for, for taking her to to our home, and so they gave me 20K. <laughs> Transport those days was 15K to Kawale. I gave her 15, we took a taxi. When we reached, I added 2,000 
along the way. Take a what? Take a soda, and I remained with one okay transport back. <laughs> you get it? Then I went to, I'm talking about this unusual kindness. People saw you, you can't what? Explain it. When I reached the Minister of Finance, I was applying for jobs. After application, I went, and when I was passing through Chitovero, and I had planned to walk to Namungona, and those days, nobody knew me. So if you see now Reverend walking, you can wave. But those days, <laughs> and I will tell you I'm cutting weight. That's all so nice. But I was walking because I had no money to do what? To go back. Okay, I was saving for the next day. Unusual kindness. When I reached Chitovero, a certain man called me. When I went, he said, hey, you are Jasper. I said, yes. Son of Mpiridwa, I said, yes. I hey, am honorable so and so. I said, wow, I heard about you. Hey, they told me you are a good boy. What and what? I said, hey, let him speak quickly so that I what? I go. He said, come to my office. He gave me an envelope as he was going. Hey, you are a good boy. Bye bye. So I never checked quickly. So I reached the park. I said, but let me check. In case there is a need to get a what? A taxi. I found 100,000 shillings. I was paying rent of 25K. And the usual what? Kindness. Don't take that grace for granted. Don't take that grace for granted. It is divine immunity, my friend. And when I reached home, the landlord, three months. And Mohogo and what? You get it. Why? Because of unusual kindness. And recently, now 2011, he goes, stands, and I'm against him. When I was preaching here, the Spirit of God said, that man showed you unusual kindness. So I wrote a letter. I don't know how he read it saying, I am so, so sorry. Not opposition is okay, I can oppose you, but the way I did, it was as if I was rem f totally forgetting that he ministered it to me when it was hard, what? Hard times. Let me tell you, friend, God has shown us unusual kindness. May we say thank you to the Lord this afternoon. May you say thank you. May you say thank you for something. And my apology again, I even went later through his wife and I met him. I said, sorry, he said, ah, it's okay. And I reminded him, he had totally done what? Forgotten. It is simple for people to be given and they forget. Now I was telling the elders recently that people give and forgive. Others get and forget. Let me repeat it. Many of us get and forget. Yet God has given and forgiven. So it is time to remember the mercies of God. Number three. Now, divine immunity ensures there is no harm. Harm will come. But divine immunity means it won't harm you. So disease will come. Things will come. Verse 3, Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and put them on the fire. That's good. When a viper came out because of the heat and fastened on his what? On his hand. Harm came. But God will ensure that there is no harm. And that's what they call divine protection. Divine immunity means harm is coming, but there is a leeway. There is a refugee in God. And I want to encourage you. Yes, disease will be announced. Hey, you have cancer. Hey, you have this. But let me tell you, there will be no harm. There will be no harm. Verse 4. When the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, he's a murderer. 
verse 5, he however shook off the the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. Father, I pray for each of these, my brethren, that yes, harm has come. Harm has been announced, but they will suffer no harm because of divine immunity. Receive it in Jesus' name. Sister Charity in that hospital, yes, harm is announced, but we declare that there will be no harm in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, some of us may have reasons. We read the Bible, even our prayer life. Uh We are reasoning in it. I don't think anybody who knew a viper what it is. Even a poor. But the viper is on the what? On the hand. And vipers have venom. Venom. And vipers, when they bite, they just count how many minutes before you what? You collapse. But he suffered no harm. Divine immunity ensures that we suffer no harm. Even when the evidence around us is telling you that things are bad, your child will die. Say, again, you know this homosexual thing and what? Pray for your children. They will suffer no harm. It doesn't matter how many are around them. They will suffer no harm. Again, it is not because of our reasoning. Our reasoning, poor Moibi would have run. But he shook it. Oh, my God, I thank you because he shook it into the fire. It became part of the fire. Divine immunity means that harm, number four, becomes part of your warmth. That when they declare this, mm -mm, not me. And I tested this in the elections, the past elections, where my friend came and told me, but by the way, he's saved, and he's really my friend. Just buy you and your family, pack your things. Go to either Rubaya or Kamgenje, but go somewhere. Because (laughs) there will be harm. There will be harm. At first, because of the evidence around me, I began reading, eh, by the way, that person left with the family in December. Hmm. Way before what? Elections. Then I read the Bible, I found out that God is very interesting. That divine immunity means that God will not do something to the whole village because of one person. So I stood in that word, that Lord, Abraham, pleaded for Sodom and Gomorrah, and even reached five people. I counted the people in my family that for the sake of my family, Lord, save Kambara up to today. And again, this is not about politics, no. It is about divine what? Immunity, that even when the evidence around you is saying harm, 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 God will say, it is okay, my daughter, and you will sail through it. Number five, it makes people call you names. A murderer or a God. Now, this is interesting because it is either you are terribly evil or you are above evil. Now, in verse 3, when the, verse 4, when the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, no doubt this man is a what? A murderer. Change of story. Verse 6, they waited. May they wait, may they wait, may disease wait, may disease wait in the name of Jesus, expecting you to square and fall down suddenly. But when they had waited a long time, and so mis- no misfortune come to him. They changed their mind and said, he's a what? He's a God. So divine immunity has two aspects. People will say a lot. She's a Mariah. She's a what? She's a wicked woman. They even remind you of your past. And then when you fail to die, oh, oh hallelujah. 
Then they begin saying, that one <laughs> is a what? Is a God. Paul was neither murderer, nor a God. Of course, he had murdered before, but through repentance, he was no longer what? A murderer. And therefore, it doesn't matter how far you had gone through sin. Accept God, let me tell you. The story will do what? Will change. It doesn't matter how many CD counts. <laughs> I have a friend, she's in Chitara. CD count five, you are supposed to have died. But now, <laughs> you need to meet her. The story, she's dying because she was a Malaya. But now the story, she's HIV negative. I mean, doctors also got what? Soaked. And therefore, she's a god. And I told her, indeed, you serve a living what? A living god. Change of things. The in-laws who had said, go away, are now saying, please come back home. You know, we loved you. They are using past tense. But anyway, divine immunity does that. That you become a wonder to the world. And therefore become a one in that office, become a wonder wherever you go. When a person meets you, may they say that there is a God, a God of Israel. Now, let me rush quickly to what divine immunity is not. Divine immunity is not pride. Divine immunity is not pride. You know that I have made it, I have, no. It is the grace of God, full stop. That our protection does not need even any help. It is the grace of God. But in verse 3, Paul had gathered a band of sticks. When they were making a fire, the commander of 276 people, I mean, I'm the one who saved them, isn't it? Pastor Paul. Should, worry, should have gone to sit because 276 people would go to gather what? Firewood. But you know, this man went to gather what? Firewood. Humbleness. And so when we see the grace of God around us, please, just be humble. Do what ordinarily others would do for you. But in Uganda, oh, they will kiss our feet, they will heart praise us, let me tell you, Paul was a humble what? Humble man. Somebody who saved 276 people per excellence is now picking what? Firewood. So go and pick up the pieces in your family. Those who abused you, give them a fire. Those who said you'll never make it be the one to bring their children back and pray for them daily. That's number one. Number two, divine Divine immunity does not mean that danger won't come. Again, a viper did what? Came. So, sickness will come. COVID will hit. Sometimes you touch your pockets and things are bad. But that does not take away the reality of God. And never make that mistake. That because I have fallen into this problem, then there is no immunity. No, in fact, through problems, we see the immunity of God. Without a viper, we wouldn't know that there was a God who shook off that viper. Then, also, it makes people blame you. Blame you for their misery. <laughs> Divine immunity, therefore, does not protect you from Rugambo. Are we clear? They will talk about what? About you. He is a murderer. So, may you be able to say that even when they throw words to me, there is a what? Immunity. So I even pity these days people who talk about me. Mm -hmm. Potea, I don't even respond. Jasper has done this. Mm -mm they will change the story and it will be soon. And so may your story change. 
instead of defending what? Yourself. Then he has touched me. You can't touch Marawa Basiji. Now, I'm becoming a Roko. Because when you are angry, you become very what? Very Roko. You can't quarrel in English, except my children who grew up in English. But you see, the challenge is that we want to defend ourselves. No, don't defend the grace of God. They will see it. They will see it. They will see it. And by the way, let them speak. And they will wait for a long time. You won't drop dead. You won't square. And the grace of God will indeed abound. Quickly. In conclusion, divine immunity has the following that you need now to capture even as we pray this afternoon. Number one, you encounter leaders. Verse 7. Now in the neighborhood of that place where land is belonging to the chief man of the island, named Publius, who received us, entertained us with hospitality for how many days? Three days. They were eating and drinking. How many days? Three. So, may God now begin preparing tables for you. Because that's the result of divine what? Immunity. The big man. Secondly, healing of the father. Now, the, the publican had the father who was sick. Paul went, laid his hand on him. That person was healed. Divine immunity means we need to dispense it also. Mark 16, 18. Mark 16, 18. The following signs will follow. What? Believers, go. Go and use those signs. Number three, the rest of the island came to experience the grace of God because Paul had had divine immunity. When you read properly, they looked after them, the sick were brought, and Paul and his colleagues, their work was what? Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. I tried to look for the, this island of Malta, but I want to guess one thing. There was a revival for God because there was divine immunity. May revival begin in your land. May revival begin in your land. May revival begin in our land. Let us pray. Father, second, Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 14, says, If my people, who are called by my name, shall humble them themselves and repent, I will forgive their sins and heal their land. Uganda is paining, O oh Lord. Many people are paining. And we pray this afternoon that through dispensation of your grace, through the power of your Holy Spirit, yes, we shall be healed in the name of Jesus. And that these people who have come today, they will be able to begin encountering that immunity so that when they move out, they will be assured of your presence. So be with them, O oh Lord, as you protect them, as you protect their families, as you restore whatever the enemy has taken away, but also as you make a way where there seems to be no way. May they know you and the power of resurrection, and that through this immunity, they will be able to tell others of your grace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God bless you. <laughs>